Shalom, and welcome to another installment of Elders of GMS giving all praises, of, giving all praises to Yahweh by Shimei uh, Today is going to be entitled. Today's top uh, class is going to be entitled uh, Marathon Class, um, dated uh, eight, which is August fourth, two thousand and fourteen, and we're just going to go into heavy and anything. You know, as the spirit leads us. So uh, with that, y'all can go ahead and get down. Yeah, yeah. This is an article from from RT uh, RT News, which pretty much is showing you that we're in World War Three. You know, basically we're in World War Three. So um, let me pull it back up. Right. This is uh, dealing with the situation over there in, in uh, Kiev, which is over there in the Ukraine, and it. Titled a uh, uh, Kiev, Kiev, right? It says Kiev deploying missile missile launchers, multiple ro rocket systems near Donetsk, Moscow. So it says Kiev, Kiev, Donetsky, Donetsk, Donetsky, Donetsky, right? O over there in Moscow, it says Kiev keeps deploying missile launchers, including SS twenty one Scarab. And multiple rocket systems, ur urgent and smirk and don't Donetsky, as it wants to continue the war in eastern Ukraine. So pretty much, they're now that's the United States that's behind Ukraine and, and Kiev, and basically they they're keeping this thing going. So that's why, like the scripture says in Second Thessalonians, if I could read that, because they were trying to, you know, get it like a, a ceasefire. Now it's to the point where you got people they're evacuating those towns over there because just like what's going on in, in Hamas I mean not Hamas in Gaza with, with Hamas and, and uh, the Israelis they got people over there in, in Kiev and certain other parts around there they got to evacuate because they're about to start bombing over there shooting these these rockets so I'm going to get uh, the book of Thessalonians real quick and this is all according to the prophecies in, in the scriptures man which proves that the Bible is the truth man you got a lot of people, like you got these, these idiots out there that still question the validity of the Bible, when all you got to do is turn on the news, the world news that is, not none of this damn Fox News and all that other, you know, cartoon bullshit, all right, all that crap. Turn on some, you know, Al Jazeera news, or RT news, and different other type of news like that, right, and different other sites that go into things, and you'll see the prophecies unfolding. Now, this is the book of Second Thess Thessalonians, First Thessalonians, pardon me. Uh, chapter 5 verse 1 it says but of the times and the seasons brethren you have no need that I write unto you all right and really that's for the elect because the rest of the, the truth is not for everybody and it's, it's not for all of Israel neither it's only for the elect of Israel so Paul said brethren you don't you don't need me to tell you what time it is because why you can see it like it says in Habakkuk in that day it shall speak right so now the prophets we're seeing this, the prophecy speaking we're living in a, a exciting time a great time we this is what the prophets were desiring to see these these issues with russia and, and uh ukraine uh th these issues over there in, in china china just had an earthquake yesterday that, that killed over 325 people man all right that's the judgment of the lord to tell you in zephaniah that every day the lord's judgment come to pass but the unjust know if it not because you niggas ain't right that's why you don't think that we're in the we're at the end of this thing man we at the end all right we at the end and that's why the spirit spirits on us to bring out all these prophecies, man. We ain't gonna be sitting around here playing no games and, and teaching you about a damn having a cookout and family date picnics and all that stuff. We ain't we ain't in that time, man. And trying to uh, make the uh, black consciousness clowns understand this truth, they can't get it. So you got to move on. But you guys don't have the truth. If you had the truth, you wouldn't be bending over backwards trying to wake them fools up, man. All they doing they doing that for the money, man. They're doing that for the money. Because they know that there's simple-minded niggas out there that will eat, eat up any bullshit that you give them as long as you wrap it, uh, you know, wrap it up nice. In the package, yeah. That's right. So it says, verse 2, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a, as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon them as travail upon a woman with child. And they shall not escape. So that's what they've been saying over there in, in Gaza. They're trying to have a ceasefire over there. That ain't work out because it's not going to work out. It's not going to be no, no peace, man. 
All right? It's going to be World War III, and it's going to be full-blown, which is going to actually lead to uh, uh, wars and, and martial law over here in the, in the United States. Okay? It's going to be martial law going on over here, too. I got a piece yep. for you. Yeah, because uh, like he mentioned uh, World War III. Uh, and that's pursuant to prophecy. This is Revelation chapter 8, verse 13. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. So notice it said, woe, woe, woe. Now the word woe means destruction or war. So the reason why the angel said it three times is because that represents the three world wars. You had World War I, you had World War II, and now we're in the beginning stages of World War III. And then when World War III kicks off, um, the end of it being uh, 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 Russia and America nuking each other, which is, which is kicked off, um, when the end of that comes, then that's going to be the end of World War III, which is going to be the war to end all wars. Because after that, there's not going to be any, any more wars. Because the Lord is going to establish His kingdom and His society on the earth. And once His kingdom and His society is established on the earth, there's not going to be any more wars. Hun, uh, yeah, well, I got a precept, uh, Isaiah 47 and 1, dealing with the uh, prophecy was coming down. I'm going to read just a couple of verses. That's Because uh, that's, like the brother said, the elder Ramlav said, it's already kicked off already. We are we already in it, man. You know what I mean. We already in World War Three. Uh, that's why everybody now is pissed off at them goddamn so-called Jews, Amalek. They killing them. Pal everybody, everybody is uh, has something to say about that, man. Everybody's making comments on that. The uh, killing them innocent Palestinians, the Israeli uh, freedom forces, and stuff like that. And there ain't gonna be no peace, especially because the real Israelites are not in that land. Which the Israelites are going to dwell, not like in other words, when the kingdom of heaven is set up, the Israelites ain't just going to be in Israel and that's it. We're going to be wherever the, mo the whole earth, man. The whole earth, the, the scripture said for the world was created for, for their sakes, right? For, for our sakes. So we're going to be in Israel. Israel is just going to be home base or, or like the, the capital. But we're going to live wherever we want to live. We're even going to live on other planets, man. That's why Yahweh Shad talked about many mansions in my father's house. In my father's house, there are many mansions. But I'm going to read this, right? Isaiah 47 and 1. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. There is no throne. Now, the virgin daughter of Babylon, we know primarily is talking about America. Uh, World War Three. I mean, the missiles are going to hit in a lot of other places, like Russia, because America going to get their missiles off, too. They gonna get their missiles off. Uh, China gonna get mis missiles off. Everybody gonna shoot missiles on America, Europe, which is Babylon. Europe, yeah, hit. Europe, which is Babylon the Great. But uh, America and America's allies, Israel got missiles too. They gonna shoot missiles and they gonna get their missiles on their enemies too. So everybody gonna be just shoot. It's gonna be like what they some shit they call it a Mexican standoff. Or something like that where everybody got guns pointed at each other and it's just shooting and every in the end everybody get, get everybody gonna get shot, man, when it's all done. So Russia gonna get hit with missiles, China gonna get hit, uh uh North Korea, India, Cuba, all that shit, man. The missiles are going then you're gonna get the backdraft from the missiles. Cause let's say if the missiles hit America and uh, all the surrounding turf, all them little Korea, Puerto Rico, Jamaica, Cuba and they gonna get the backlash from that shit. Okay, so this is, it's going to be a messy deal, man. Yeah. Okay. Hey, that's, that's why the Lord calls it uh, um, Armageddon. Yeah. You know, because Armageddon is uh, the uh, the uh, uh, mount of the troops. You know, because that's that, this 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 war is going to be a major war. I mean, World War One and World War Two, which were major wars, but this is going to be a major war because it's going to involve a whole lot of, of basically all the armies of the world are going to be involved in this. Done. That's right. There ain't going to be no goddamn conscientious objectives, man. There ain't going to be no such thing, man. Everybody going to be involved in this, man. And then on top of that, when the missiles hit, the scripture said um, the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. So that means it's going to be earthquakes because when the missiles hit, man, it's going to be bad. Shit going to be blowing up. And then, on, and then, that, and then by all that rocking, it's, that, it's, <laughs> that shit going to cause tsunamis, man. 
is what, yeah, the earthquakes and behind earthquakes comes tidal waves. tidal waves. Back in the days when I was growing up, we called it a tidal wave. They got that new fancy name for it now, tsunami. And that was a, it was a tidal wave, man. That's it. You're gonna have massive t- tidal waves hitting certain other areas. Volcanoes are gonna erupt. It's gonna throw the balance of the earth off, man. Yeah, I got a scripture. Uh, this is uh, Isaiah nine and five, right? It says, "Every for every battle of the warriors is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood." Like when you watch some ancient movies, you know Conan and, and samurai movies, you know, different ancient uh, gladi- gladiator, gladiator. That was another movie yeah. when they used to for- fight. They used to fight with weapons, sharp weapons that they can uh, tear off the head of their uh, opponents. And uh, jug them in the body, in the stomach, and, and so forth, you know? They had, uh, like in the Roman Empire, the gladiators had, uh, they had swords, they had uh, uh, spikes, they had, um, they had this thing called a trident, all right? And basically what happened when you use that trident, you would, the, if the guy had a sword, you would, you would, you would uh, thrust that trident into his arm and twist it, and the sword would fall out, and then you would stab him up. So that so that trident was a, a deadly weapon, amongst the swords and the darts and all that, you know. But it says uh, it says for every battle of the warrior, is with confused noise, and gum is rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Now, when you look up the word fuel, the word fuel, <laughs> the fuel is the people's bodies, because when you look it up. The word there is meat. So the, so the, and so the fuel is going to be the thing that's going to keep that fire, you know, constantly going is 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 that is the meat of the people, the people's flesh. That's going to be a part of it, man. That's what keeps the fire going. Fuel, man. If you can take somebody's body and throw it in some fire, it keeps the fu- the fire keeps the party going, so to speak. <laughs> Hey, hey, I'm going to go back I, uh, Well that's America Because America you know, The missiles are going to hit in other places But that main focus of the scriptures is on that America boy America's going to burn man This place is going to be destroyed man and, and, and all them niggas man All you black conscious niggas And you gang bang Israelites That's what I'm going to call you man Y'all going y'all gonna to be of that fuel You guys ain't going nowhere man You're going to burn right here man Alright all right, come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon, which is America. Sit on the ground, man, and America's done. America's on the, really, America's on the ground right now. This, look at Detroit, man. You got all them niggas in Detroit. They crying about they ain't got no water. They shut the water off. It, it's all over with, man. It's all over with, man. Oh, and now I know for a fact they're starting to, and we've, we've been saying this for years, they're starting to kick these damn women off Section 8, man. And I know this for a fact because a woman, a so-called woman that I know, right? Uh, matter of fact, I was talking to her earlier today, and she was crying about they 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 threatening to kick her off Section Eight, right? Now they just kicking, they just they they they, they trying to cut. They 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 revoking the Section Eight. So a lot of you goddamn women, y'all gonna st- Isaiah thirty-two and nine, man. Okay. Can I say something? Con, con. Yeah, you had re- read uh, in Revelation 13 and you came across the word woe. Now the word woe is uh, the word alas or woe. And it basically means an interjection of grief or of denunciation. So in other words, the Most High said, I'm, I'm through with you. You did what you had to do. Now it's time for you to be destroyed. So that's what woe means, all right? <laughs> yep. There is no throne, uh, there is no throne, O daughter of the child these, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. That's because the missiles are going to hit this place. It's, it's going to be destroyed, man. Because uh, when you're looking over in these other countries, in Egypt, in Libya, and uh, the, the Middle East, they got bombs going off, being dropped on them. You know, it, it looks like a damn a third world country. America, I mean, you've had so-called little skirmishes over here. That Esau had going back in the 18th, the Civil War, they had war, so-called wars, Revolutionary War, but not no war of epic proportions like like uh, uh, what's coming. That's right. <laughs> yeah, uh, America has never really been 
uh, messed up like that, man, where it was bombed. And America's never bombed or nothing like that. Cunt. If you want to say something? Cunt, Elder, because um, now when they showed you pictures of, uh, of, um, of the Gaza Strip, right, and those different buildings in that area and the Palestinians, a lot of those buildings are leveled off. You can see the shelling on the wall. You can see gun, gun, uh, you know, machine gun fire. You can see holes in the wall. You, you, it's basically all rubble, and that's all caused by by war. Now those are not those missiles and those bullets and stuff. That's just a, a small uh, 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 percentage of of the weapons that these devils have. You know, but the the thing that's coming that's going to flatten everything out is going to be those nuclear missiles. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Which we do. <laughs> Which we're the only ones that teach about the nuclear missiles. Okay, we're the only group, uh, Great Millstone, GMS. We're the only ones that teach about the missiles, man. No other Israelite group is talking about the missiles coming to destroy America. It's like they're afraid of the missiles, man. Like, and they're, they're hoping that maybe that that's not going to happen. Yeah? I, 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 got, I got something for you. Yeah, this is uh, Zechariah chapter uh, 14. Because the Elder Tar earlier read uh, Isaiah 9. And the precept for fuel meant meat, you know, those meat puppets out there that's going to be burned up. Well, this is what the scriptures say in uh, Zechariah 14 and 12. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. And, hey, and you know what? If I can say that's all the other nations. It's uh, Jerusalem. Jerusalem represents Israel. On a whole, because all the nations have taken apart and putting down a nation. All these other nations. Esau and all these other nations. All throughout the centuries, they've all had a hand in uh, the downfall of Israel. You understand? See, we, we, Esau, we talk about Esau, but all the other nations right. had their foot up our ass at one time or another, man. It was the, the, the Ishmael and Ham mm -hmm. that uh, caused uh, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi to come in slavery. Okay. See? So the Arabs, them damn Arabs, they getting bombed over there. The missiles are going to hit them too. They all going to get it, man. Yep, them Hamites too. Yeah, them goddamn Hamites, man. Yep. Them missiles going to hit certain parts of Africa too, man. That's right. Africa's a target for the missiles, man. All right, it says, Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouths. So what's going to do that? That's that heat. That that uh f that fire, that uh that is spoken of in the scriptures. No, that's why Yahweh should say, "What if the Lord clothed the grass which is today and tomorrow's cast in the oven?" Yeah. Because that's what's coming. You know, you that that whole land of Israel is going to be totally devastated. It got to man. You know, because I mean, when when Israel was in there, the real Israelites, the, there was wickedness going on. But these devils that are in there now, there's total wickedness going on right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, they got gay parades over there. They, they got kosher pig. But it makes sense because the white man is the fucking devil. And Amalek is the worst of the worst, man. He's the worst of Esau. So you got the worst of Esau up in there, man. You know? So, of course, you got all kind of wickedness going on. And the, the main thing is that they over there saying that they're the Israelites. And um, you read that scripture just now, that movie. There was a movie that uh, came out years ago, Indiana Jones, the first one. The first one, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, with Harrison Ford, and at the end of the movie, they so-called, uh, they, well, it was all uh, fantasy, they found the Ark of the Covenant, the ancient Ark of the Covenant that belonged to us. They, these devils had actually found it, the Nazis, and at the end of the thing, they had this guy, I'm assuming he was supposed to be a so-called, he was supposed to be a Levite priest, and they had him dressed up just exactly according to the how the scripture describes the Levite priest with the ephod and all that. With the, he had the whole thing, man. Yeah, he was on the side of the Germans. Yeah. He was part of the German army because yeah. it was the U.S. against the German Gun. trying to find Gun. those relics. Gun. Which is which is nothing but the fulfillment of uh, Jeremiah 8 and 1. Yeah, gun. Gun. So he might have been uh, some form of a uh, Nazi, uh, whatever he was. He was a Nazi agent, whatever. But the dude, he knew Hebrew. He had supposedly... He knew it because he chanted ancient Hebrew and he was dressed up just like an ancient uh, Levite priest, right? And he said some words in Hebrew and the ark opened. But then when he opened the ark, I guess it was supposed to be deaf angels came out and there's, con uh, they were in a, but they were a fire. They were like a consuming fire. Yeah, and they came out and they just destroyed the whole camp. And the, the dude, they showed you his, uh, the, they, 
it, that was the scriptures because the guy their skin just melted right off and their tongues melted it was a, the scripture man yeah they actually built the ark this is, this is one documentary I saw where they actually built the ark they went they went through the specifications of uh, what the scriptures say and um, the exact spec- specification they actually built the ark and it started you know Shaking the house and the electricity was going off. It's just, things started happening, so they got nervous and they and they took it back apart. So I mean, this this is real, you know. This 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 stuff is real. The Mossad just didn't show, haven't shown himself as of yet, but he's getting ready to show himself. You see all these prophecies popping off like popcorn, man. And then you got Negroes out there trying to wake up some black unconsciousness fools, man. What we're doing with with the great great millstone is doing the elder the great millstone and the men under them um when we go out there on the highways and the byways we constantly pushing out this word and m- the main focus that you're supposed to be in is on these prophecies because the prophecies are coming to pass okay yep. yeah like last night you know we were we were um watching uh, that movie contagion now that movie Contagion is heavy. I believe that came out was it 2011, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, someone's around there. And now, now look at look at the things that are going on right now in the news. You know, around the world, it's it's some some similar to what's going on what's going on there, because in that movie they show you people getting infected, and then not only just that, they show you the uh, uh, martial law, they show you the military in the streets, military trucks driving down the street, quarantines, chaos. You no know, people people are um um. Uh, rush in the pharmacy, you know, to get that that fake ass uh, cure. Yeah. So it, it, th- th- this thing is escalating. This is these are things that's going to actually happen because when people are in a panic, they don't think about okay, well, let me just remain calm, you know, so we can everybody can get what they need. Their whole mentality is being selfish. Look, I got to get this for myself. So they all going to rush, whether it be the pharmacy, whether it be the you know the food, you know, they're going to think about themselves and their families. It's going to be over with. It's yeah. going to be over with, man. Because, uh, like I said, they're going to cause a truck strike. Well, number one, the cities are going to be locked off, martial law. Yep. So they're going to control what food comes in. They're gonna, yep. They ain't going to be no, uh, the trucks just come into the supermarkets. They're going to say, look, the, the, the trucks ain't coming in here, man. The trucks ain't coming in here. And then we'll bring it to this particular, bring all the food to this particular storehouse. We're going to delegate what goes out. The supermarkets are closed. Right. Matter of fact, they're going to close the supermarkets, man. They're going to close them supermarkets and then they're going to have the food come to that, their own form of storehouses. Right, and they're right, going right, to delegate right. or ration out that's what right. food, who gets what. And I'm going to just say this, man. Now, in that movie Contagion, they also showed you Matt Damon was in that movie, right? Yep. And he had his daughter, his wife dropped dead because she so-called cheated on him. Yep. So she caught the disease and died, which was good anyway. But uh, he was trying to spare him and his daughter's wife life. Next door, they show people running up in people's houses, killing them, and taking their goods. That's coming, man. I'm going to say this, man. And for you so-called women out here, the party is over for y'all, man. The, 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 these last couple of hours, I'm going to say, this is the last couple of hours for you so-called women to walk around here the way you are. You know, with that, uh, what's the word, putting on them airs and that, that haughty, pompous attitude that you women have. This is the last couple of hours, man. Yeah, because... What you did, you know, you you got it when all hell breaks loose, we're going to look at you sideways, man. Yeah. Unless you look good. Only reason why we're going to deal with you is if you look good and we're going to get some pussy. That's And I'm, I'm telling it just like it is, man. Oh, man. That's the only reason why we're going to deal with you, all right? Because you ain't, you ain't got nothing else for us. Yeah. You know, you yeah. can't yeah. cook. You can't fucking clean. Yeah. You so don't, you can't, yeah, you can't do nothing, you know? So the only reason if we, if we, if you, in one of our, in Esau's house Because we're going to take Esau's house yeah. And we're going to be living up in there And then we're going to pop you Alright And then if you If you buck up We're going we're gonna to kick <laughs> We're going to give you the boot Alright yeah, That's right man and, and the thing is too Most of you women Are going to be asked out Because you ain't going to be able To take a shower You ain't going to be able to put Because a lot of you women Are just fake and phony man yeah. All right, if you if you don't put no makeup on or nothing like that, you look like all oh, hell, man. You got all kind of fucking potholes in your face. You know, you got all kind. You got to put loads of deodorant on and stuff like that. You got to so magic. You gonna look like hell when this thing break forth, man. Ain't no we ain't gonna we, actually to kill you is gonna be you gonna be begging for us to put you out of your misery, man. All right, we ain't gonna want you funky ass bitches, man. All right, like the elder said, if anything, we gonna go to the the Edomites kicking their door. 
is kill them and take their little dainty little cracker bitches and because they're going to be maintained somewhat and then we're going to have our way with them. Okay, and that's what the scriptures tell you in, in, in uh, the book of Isaiah. You know? Yeah. And that's right. And Esau, we're going to, the other time I said, we are going to come up in your nice houses and we're going to take your daughters and we might kill you and then if your wife look good, pop them and we're going to be in your house drinking your wine out your wine cellars, man. Okay? Eating them filet mignons. <laughs> All right, this is the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah, the fourth chapter, the 30th verse. And when thou art spoiled, what wilt thou do? This is referring to you so-called black women, you women of the tribes. What wilt thou do? Though thou clovest thyself with crimson, though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold, though thou rentest thy face with painting. That's talking about the makeup. The makeup that you put on your face. It says, though thou rentest thy face. And rent means to tear. So here it is, a lot of you women, man, you, the Lord bless you with a beautiful complexion, and you ruin it by putting on that cheap-ass makeup. Yeah. You know? Get all them bumps on your face. Then you get all them bumps on your face, and you say, what happened? What happened is you put that cheap-ass makeup on your face. That's, that's what happened. And you cake it on, too. Uh, and the scriptures speak about a, a whore is known by her eyelids. Meaning you, you, you women that wear that heavy eye makeup around your eyes... That's that's a that's a sign of a of a of a whore. So if you didn't know it, you you know it now. That's according to to the apocrypha. It says, "Though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold, though thou rentest thy face with painting, that's makeup. In vain shall thou make thyself fair." It's talking to you, women. Thy lovers will despise thee; they will seek thy life. Yeah, that's some them white men on Wall Street mm -hmm. that you get you get dolled up to go down there and shit, and then, you, and then you work overtime, and we know what the overtime is all about. And hey, we're gonna kick a lot of you fucking black ass hoes, you stupid niggas that put up these black women as gods, like that clown, uh, uh, na uh what's his name, <laughs> natural, natural Tahuti, Tahuti, nigga, you ain't never coming out, man. Them nigga, your 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 buddies and the black conscious community they don't give a fuck about you, man. You know, they ain't, they ain't, they ain't, man, I ain't giving this nigga no money. I give him $2. I give him $2, man. Yeah. Hey, give, give, me, give me the tally, man. Just like a month and a half, they, they had a tally to try to get this nigga, nigga out of jail. And uh, as of, yes, two days ago, it was uh, $685. Let's see if somebody had put. And a week prior to that, it was uh, 675 So. <laughs> and the total is? And the total is? It's st the, the, what's the goal? Uh, the goal is twenty five thousand. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna have a telephone. Uh, we're gonna have an actual. <laughs> we're gonna get. We're gonna get Jerry Lewis. <laughs> you know, we're gonna get Jerry Lewis, and we're gonna have a telephone to try to get that money up. Now, if we can get Jerry Lewis, man, and uh, <laughs> we'll get that money, man. Well, hey, you know what I'm saying? Then you'd be saying Jerry Lewis is God. You know? Hey, but the black woman. I mean, how much of that did the black woman give? I yeah. thought they were supposed to be God. Nigga, now, you, now you're fucking lingering in prison, man. Now you're rotting in prison. Check it out. $685 raised by 17 donors in two months. Read that again. $685 raised by 17 donors in two months. So you ain't getting out, my man. <laughs> you're not getting out. Okay? That's right. Um, read, reading on it says uh, back in Jeremiah 4 and 31 for I've heard the voice of a woman in travail so you women get ready to suffer man you know when they have a uh, martial law is declared that's that's the beginning of the end of you you women flaunting your ass around <laughs> you know with that yeah with, with the uh, skimpy clothing you know uh, exposing your breasts exposing your ass Walking around talking shit, always on the goddamn cell. They should just surgically implant a, phone, a, a cellular phone in your women's ears. Well, that's man. what the mark of the beast is. Yeah. The mark of the beast, the ultimate goal is to take that cell phone, which is a smartphone, as a computer, and put it in your, in your brain. Yeah, that would fit. Right, that, that's, yeah, that's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tattoo that you put on your arm. It's uh, Motorola. Motorola. Motorola made it up. Somebody look it up for me. And if you take, it's a video on it too, and you take, uh, 
you take uh, the cell phone and you put it on that on that 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 tattoo that's on your arm, and it activates your cell phone. Okay. Yeah, that would fit. That would sit just nicely with you women. Because every time you see these women, they're always on the goddamn cell phone. And what the hell are they talking about? I guarantee you they're, they're not talking about the truth. They're talking about adultery or wickedness, man. You always see these women walking around with the phone in their ear. And I guarantee you it's all about wickedness or some, some gossip. Yeah. So when martial law is declared, you ain't going to see that no more. All right? It's going to be the time of trouble. Going back in Jeremiah 4 and 31, for I've heard a voice of a woman in travail. And the, one, the main ones that's going to catch hell is you women. See, after a while, a man can man up and deal with, deal with the situation at hand. But you women, man, why do you think the Lord called you the weaker vessel? It's really going to be shown during the hour of martial law when, when martial law is totally uh, takes over. For I've heard a voice of a woman in travail and the anguish as of her that bringeth forth her first child. And that's a lot of anguish, too. The voice of the daughter of Zion that bewaileth herself, <laughs> which represents the men of Israel too, because a lot of you so called men, a lot of you are just like women. You're nothing but black women in drag, man. That's all you are. You, you, you highly emotional, man. That bewaileth herself, that spreadeth her hands, saying, Woe is me now. And that's akin to the time of trouble. Jeremiah, the 30th chapter, the 7th verse. For my soul is wearied because of the murderers. And once again, before Esau goes down, he's going to show why he's the devil. Because they're going to bring out their, uh, they're going to brandish their weapons during the hour of martial law. They got the tanks ready. They got the MRAPs, which we've done videos on the MRAPs, the, mir uh, the military vehicles that parade the cities. We've actually seen them. We've actually seen them, man. And they, they, they were showing themselves in their pomp during the so-called parade when everybody was was liquored up and acting stupid you had them MRAPs going down the street and them guys in the MRAPs they weren't acting silly and looking stupid they had that look on like give me a reason so I can use this 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 50 cal weapon I got in my hand here <laughs> yeah I got found it uh, this is uh, entitled I I unlock my phone with a tattoo and there's a picture just put that in, it'll come up. And there's a picture of the cell phone with a person with a tattoo on their right hand on the inside. And and what you do is you you you, you uh and there's a video on it too. And you take the phone and you put on that tattoo, but it's a temporary tattoo. But the next step is to actually put the chip in your arm. So they slowly getting or quickly getting you used to this uh Techno this new technology. You people, you, you people, man. You know what, man? And you, that once again, man. Nate and Johanna and them guys, man. Them, them. You guys that's following them. Elder Tahar made a statement before we started filming. That's what that's scriptural. Um, be no more concerned how the ungodly shall be judged. Yep. But be concerned how the righteous shall uh, shall be saved. So, so, so you guys, man. I mean, the only way we talk about you, Nate, and all you guys, if the spirit, you know, get on us and talk. But really, man, it's gonna get to a point where the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord, may have it where we may not talk about you no more because the Most High is just ready to roll on you, man. Okay, all you guys that's following these guys, and someone look, don't listen to them guys, them madmen talking about the chip and all that mad. It's right there in front of your face. That dude, Nate, is nothing but a main, a, a, a big black ass Judas goat, man. That, that, that's all he is, man. And all you guys, that keep on following him, man. Keep on following him. And then you niggas, you jakes out here, y'all worried about the cops putting chokeholds on people. Yo, that, that's that deal, man. That, the white man showing you he's the devil. And them cops already they've been ready to start fucking you niggas up, putting chokeholds on you. Y'all crying. Y'all got out shot. They, they, uh, they put a chokehold on a pregnant woman. Y'all ain't seen shit yet, man. We've been telling you for the longest time that you niggas was going to was going to get it, man. We've been telling you for the longest time that these cops, they're going to stop playing games with you, man. So now they're putting chokeholds on your ass, man. That's good, man. That's good. That's wonderful. Okay? You goddamn, I hope that was a black-ass woman. They put that chokehold on too, man. And guess what? They're going to keep doing it, man. 
more niggas, they gonna grow up, they gonna put choke them choke holds on you, them red naked chokes on you, them guillotine chokes on you, and choke your ass out, man. Cause they don't care about you, man. Okay? There's gonna be a lot of Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of grounding and pounding. A lot of laying and laying low by them uh, machine guns. Hey, it's prophecy, man. This is the book of Jeremiah, the fifteenth chapter, the second and the third verse. It says well, let me start the first verse. Then the Lord, then said the Lord unto me, Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, which Moses and Samuel represents uh, two great men of the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, which the Lord Yahweh, the Lord Yahweh had respect to. He had respect to Moses and Samuel. But he said, Though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not be toward this people. And what people? He's talking about you, you niggas. Who are known as Israelites in the Bible. Cast them out of my sight. And let them go forth. And that is why we're out of the land of Israel. Right? That is why we're over here in America. Brought here in cargo slave ships. Brought here in slavery. And not just America. All over the world. And it shall come to pass. If they say unto thee. Whither shall we go forth? Then thou shalt tell them. Which we're supposed to tell you. You so called Negroes. You tribes. Thus saith the Lord such as for death to death so that's what's coming the season of death right and such as for the sword which represents destruction to the sword so that choke hole is like a sword because <laughs> the sword represents destruction and such as are for the famine which we've been telling you the famine is coming to the famine and such as are for the captivity to the captivity. Now, what's an example of the captivity? Those uh, concentration camps. Those detention centers. Now, we told you about the King Alfred plan. And that plan is to detain 21 million Negroes. So, what is that? That's captivity. Then you have something called quarantine. Because when that Ebola virus and the different viruses are spread. And they bring that disease warfare. You're going to have quarantine centers. Quarantine is another word for quarantine. is is uh, captivity okay captivity quarantine captivity is the same thing so the Lord is speaking about famine he's speaking about the sword he's speaking about captivity then he says in the th third verse and I will appoint over them you tribes four kinds say of the Lord the sword to slay and the dogs to tear now a lot of those different military groups they carry them dogs with them them, uh, in England, they call them Alsatian. In, uh, over here, they call them German Shepherds. And those German Shepherds, they're the most intelligent dogs out of the dog family. <laughs> them German Shepherds are going to rip all your ass off of you, off of you niggas, man. Because they're, they're going to sick them dogs on you. A lot of times, you'll see those police, those policemen, they'll pass by in their, in their cars, and they'll have a, a German Shepherd in the back. And they'll have the meanest look, man. Then he'll start barking, rah, 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 rah. like he just can't wait to get out that 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 cop car and tear some ass up, man. Well, that's the scripture right there. The Lord said, "I will appoint over you four kinds." Say of the Lord, the sword to slay, the dogs to tear, and the fowls of heaven or of the heaven, which reminds me of the movie The Birds. Hey, that might happen. Most I might put the spirit on the birds. The birds might start pecking you niggas, man, pecking pecking your eyes out. You know? Hey, in the movie The Birds, right? Which was directed by Alfred Hitchcock. There's a scene where the Irish guy is in the bar and he's drinking. <laughs> and he goes, it's the end of the world. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so the most high might put the spirit on them birds, man, to get busy, man. You know? Hey, you ever seen them? them uh, we've seen it. A, a, a baby hawk swoop down on, 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 on its prey. They're merciless, man. And they got them sharp-ass talons. And once they grip onto you, that's your ass, man. A lot of them birds, man, they're going to swoop down on you niggas, man. You calling drugs. Man. You know, the birds might swoop down on you and, and peck, take your eyes out, man. You know, take your head off with, with one grip. Well, them niggas selling the worst type of drug is lies. Yeah. Like Nate, Nate and uh, Yohan and them guys, Bubble Eyes, when they teach... When they teach contrary to what we're teaching because we are the true men of the Lord um, then you're selling the drug so you're going to get swooped down upon right. oh, 
I may, and in the movie The Birds, the Irish guy quoted the scripture. And then there, there was this, this, this feminist bitch, she came back and quoted another scripture. She said, War unto them that rise up early and that follow strong drink. So the Irish guy, <laughs> you know, the Irish guy kept quiet in the movie. But the point is that the birds just went crazy and they started attacking people. So here I'm reading the prophecy about the Lord said he'll call, cause the fowls of the heaven to, to bring death. He said, I'll appoint unto them four kinds, four kinds of death. All right. It says, and the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the earth to devour and destroy. So, so you know, the season of death is coming, man. In many different ways, and hey, like that old saying, six million ways to die, choose one. That's right. Hey, all, hey man, all kinds of <laughs> the, the angel of death is is on his way, man. That's what's coming to America. The angel of death man. is here. The angel of death is here. Hey, you just warming up <laughs> like that in that movie. Killing time is here. That's right. That's right. Yep. <laughs> you know, and, I, that, and that's what we're supposed to teach, man. Hey, well, you now, know? now since you said that, that's a good segue <laughs> we, to, for me to jump up in there. He said, that's what we're supposed to teach, right? The word is prophecy. One, as Mo would say, one word. Give me one word for what this brother just said. That's right. Prophecy. Uh, this is Second Ezra, the 15th chapter, and starting from the top. It says, behold, speak. That This is what it says, man. It doesn't say, go and try to wake up black consciousness fools, man. Okay, don't say, give, give out peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, man. Okay? It, it don't say give clothes to the homeless. It, don't, it doesn't say uh, join a, 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 right, a soup kitchen. It don't say uh, get with Jimmy Carter, the former president, and join that, what's that called? Something for Humanities? Habitat for Humanities and build houses and shit, you know? Yeah, yeah. As a Hebrew, wear your turban and your fringes. That, that ain't our job, man. All right? Our job as a man of the Lord... Is a, is a teach is a prophesy, okay? It says, "Behold, uh, read." It, I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna give you the scripture again. Second Ezra, uh, uh, fifteen and one. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people. Who are the Lord's people? You got some Israelite groups that say the white man is part of the Lord's people that they're gonna be saved. That's bullshit, man. It said, "Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people, Israel, the words of prophecy." Okay. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. It says two, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. And where are we reading from? Out of the scriptures. So the prophets writ, wrote this down in paper like Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Obadiah, Ezra, um, uh, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Obadiah. That, why do you think they call those books the books of the prophets? Because it was a pro the prophets that wrote them books, that received them prophecies and saw visions and wrote it on paper so that we can read it today, which we are the reincarnation of them. All right? It says, Fear not the imagination against thee, let not the unbelief, incredulity, unbelief of them trouble thee that speak against thee. Now you got a lot of people that we've been getting on Nate so so hard. And the reason why we get on Nate is because the spirit gets on us to get on Nate and other guys. Now you got people that say, well, why don't you leave Nate alone? Why don't you leave IUIC alone? Oh, they, 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 they built their ninth school. Why don't you give them a break? Why don't you grow up? Why don't you do this? Why you always got to get on them? Well, we ignore everything that you niggas got to say because you don't even know what the hell is going on. We're doing, we're, we're doing the will of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. The Most High has put the spirit on us to get on that nigga, man. And what that nigga's doing is he's coming back and calling himself making counter videos, man. But, and then, and, but then they'll say, see, they ain't saying nothing now. They're silenced now. Oh, really? <laughs> We always get, we jump, boy, we can't wait till you make, hey, put, go to go to IUIC, go to YouTube, go to IUIC uh, in the classroom. If you put in IUIC, it should come up. And I want to see if he put something new so I can, so I can watch it and I can, I can, I can dissect it, man. Okay? 
So, so for you people that say, well, why don't you leave them alone? You ain't got no other. You ain't got nothing better to do than to get on Nate and the IUIC. No, we don't got nothing better to do. Okay, that's the answer. We don't got nothing better to do because we're doing the will of Yahweh by Shem Yahushai to reveal those false prophets. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Gone. Gone. It says, and cause them. I'm sorry. Three. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity. Which is an unbelief of them. No, those of you niggas, well, why don't you give them a break? Why you always got to get on Nate? Why you always got to get on IUIC? You ain't spiritual. You don't see the spiritual uh, aspect of it, man. You know, you don't see the double meaning there. It's <laughs> against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee. You ain't troubling us, man. We're going to keep doing what we're doing, getting on Nate until the spirit takes us off of him and jump on somebody else. Okay? <laughs> like we fixing to get get on your shire. Oh, that red red glove wearing <laughs> fool, that that Rosicrucian. All right? Um uh that's that hold up. That uh it says incredulity of them of them trouble thee that speak against thee. All those guys speak against us, man. Do you know there's got there's scoffers that speak against us that even when they even when they um deal with something uh even if they're against what Nate got to teach they won't say nothing man they won't say nothing like 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 Bun Yum Yum the the, the 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 toothpick killer you know <laughs> the gangster gangster Ben that yeah. that that fucking hypocrite man now they teach in the H O D C that the mark of the beast is the chip right. So I got on him about, wait a minute. I said, well, why don't you get on Nate about that, man? Why don't you make a video cutting Nate? You get on all kind of things, but you ain't going to make no video talking about, well, Nate's going off. Okay? Because you were scared of that fucking, fucking, uh, 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 uh that yeah. scarecrow looking nigga. All right? <laughs> yeah, well, well, uh, the Ukraine, children really stop. Yeah, the, they so-called call themselves getting on Yohanna, but then they, they, they half ass. Yeah, but they got to get get at Nate. They got to get at Nate. In the Nate front. is blatantly teaching the same thing that Yohanna is teaching, that the mark of the beast is Christianity and an embargo. Yeah. As a matter of fact, Nate did say it. He got a new thing. It's an embargo, and it's talking about the nations. Mm. And he said a nigga, a nigga can't buy or, or sell nothing. A Niggas Snickers. are buying and shit a snicker bar. Well, hold up. You, when you get that chip, if you want to get a Snicker bar, you're going to have to use that chip, chip to get that Snicker bar, man. Yeah, that's right. Go ahead. Yeah. Earlier, we were talking about birds. Well, <laughs> there's, a, there's a story from the, the Sydney Morning Herald. It says, angry birds attack peace doves released by Pope Francis. Now, this is dated January 27, 2014. It says two white That happened a couple of times. Kind. That happened a couple of times. But that normally happens when when you when you uh, let go doves, the vulture, the uh, scavenger birds, if they see them they're going to eat them up. Mm. Oh, so that okay. happens a lot, you know. Okay. All right. So Like you know when you have them weddings and uh you release them doves, those doves are trained to go a certain way and then they turn back. But it looks like they going they just disappearing. But the ones that disappear them, them scavenger birds eat them up. Yes, right. So they mm. train them to go to fly outside the frame and then to come back, you know? Mm. Mm. So that's an omen. That's yeah. an omen against the Pope. All right? That's right. That's right. Well, to read the story, it says two white doves that were released by children standing alongside Pope Francis as a peace gesture have been attacked by other birds. And that reminds me of the scripture, when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction. As tens of thousands of people watched in St. Peter's Square on Sunday, now tens of thousands of people watched this, a seagull and a large black crow swept down, which crow represents... A large represent, black crow. <laughs> a crow, a crow represents... Hey, Nate looks like a crow. He looks yeah, like a Nate crow, wouldn't, man. Nate wouldn't, wouldn't have attacked him, doves. Because <laughs> he's a black counterpart to the vicar of Christ. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. But he looks like a crow, <laughs> a, big, a big black crow. crow. And a large black crow 
swept down on the doves right away. They were set free from the open window of the ap- ap- apostolic palace. It, and le- just like Elatar <laughs> said. Apostolic palace. Apostolic comfy, palace. Comfy, was probably, pro- pro- comfy probably released the birds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, comfy who? Comfy what? What is that? Yeah, comfy is no longer. <laughs> hey, well, that's why them, them uh, uh, the, uh, what do you call them? Not the Rosa Crucians, but the, uh, what's that other group? The, the Malta, the, 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 the Knights of Malta. Yeah. Hey, that's why they got, uh, that's why they got, uh, uh Yohan, um, um, Yohan. They got Yeshia back, man. Yeah. They, 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 you know, they brought, they bringing them out, man, you know? Yeah. And the first thing he said was, uh, the first thing he tried to do was destroy the book of Galatians 4 and 26, where it says that, uh, Jerusalem is the mother of us all. The f- that's the first thing well, he did. Well, basically, when he said that, he was talking about his God. Which yeah. his God goes back to Ur of the Chaldees. <laughs> That's right. Okay, he's he following <laughs> the religion of uh, Abraham's father, Terah. Terah, right. Because the Lord wasn't dealing with Terah. The Lord was dealing with Abraham. That's right. Because Terah, right. Abraham's father, was all into that, into the black, demonic, you know, Canaanite gods and so forth. Hermetic right. gods, okay? That's right. Yeah, so basically that story of the birds is just showing you it's just one example of how the Most High could put the spirit on the birds to attack at will. And those birds, they're going to definitely definitely start attacking people. You know, you, you, to, today it was uh, doves. Tomorrow it's going to be people. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, let me say this too. Now, when you look up the word, and I went through it the other day, when you look up the religious, as, the religious aspects of the pagan Roman Empire, and that's where the Whole, the so-called Holy Roman Empire, the Holy See that you know of today, the Roman Catholic Church, their religious rites go back to the pagan rites of, uh, of the uh, pagan Roman Empire. Now, you had what was called augurs, and they were au- uh, augur- um, inaugurated, like the president is inaugurated. When you look up the word augur, it goes back to uh, a Roman pagan Roman soothsayer and basically what it means is man who looks at birds because that's where they get the omen from they look at the, the way the birds fly in formation what, whatever bird does and they see things so really that was that was a that was an omen right there the fact that the blue the, 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 the dubs were let loose and those uh, vulture birds or those uh, uh, mo- scavenger birds came swoop down and grabbed them up that's an omen and they know it's an omen, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's heavy. It's, it's a kind kind of omen of death, like the elder said. And this is the book of, to back them up too. It's Ecclesiastes chapter thirty-nine, verse verse twenty-eight. It says there be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pull out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. Fire and hell and famine and death. All these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts. You know, like the, the elders was talking about those vultures, man. Okay, the, the teeth and then the, the talons. They got their claws. They come and p- pluck your eyes out and stuff, you know, with them talons. All right, it says, it says teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents, and sword. Punishing the wicked to destruction. Yeah. But, uh, can I say this too? And it also said fire. That also represents these floods, these tsunamis, these earthquakes, yeah. volcanoes. Yeah, right. That represents all that, man. And that's happening right now. So w- we already in uh, the, the the we already in the, the, the destruction. We in it already, man. We we we, we already in it. We in World War Three right now. We in with this. We, World War Three started already. It's already here. It's just going to intensify more. We're in the destruction. We're talking about the destruction is coming. We're already in it. Yeah. Just to let y'all know, we're already in it. Yeah, yeah. So like I said, man, like we got on the women, but you niggas out here, y'all women too, man. This is the last couple of hours, man. This is the last couple of hours for all the bullshit to, to, to go on, man. Yeah, yeah, that's that's like that movie, The Purge. Yeah. You know, they were saying they were counting down the hours before that night of The yeah. Purge came yeah. in. Cutting, cutting. You know, and then once, once, the purge. Once, the, once the sun went down... Yeah. If you were caught outside, that was your ass. <laughs> yeah, you know, man. so that that's the time that we're coming up to. 
And uh, you notice all these movies, all these apocalyptic movies are coming out. The Purge, and every last one of them goddamn movies, they, like when, when the hell break, the women are just humble and scared. Yo, man, you women are going to be fucked up. Y'all going to be messed up. And I'm going to tell you something. The majority of you women, man, we ain't going to want you, man. You nasty things that walk around around here now. And, and, and I'm going to say something else. Well, a lot of you women that, that, like, certain women that, let's say, we try to, brothers might have tried to get wet and you front it. You, man, you better not come around, man. You better not come around. Any woman... That that let's say that we might have wanted to get with, and you ain't want you was uh, what's the word posting high or, or stunting. Your ass is gonna be out there, man, and it's gonna be just like uh, the Book of Eli and uh, uh, the Road and the Purge. Now in the Book of Eli, right, and also in the uh, the Road, they, they showed you, man, like when they caught a woman in the Book of Eli. There was a scene. Denzel was on that mission, and uh, there was a, there was like a. No, there was a couple. It was a man walking with his woman, and I guess they had some kind of goods, or they had some uh, uh, resources. They might have had a little water, a little food, and them guys on the bike, them dude that them them renegades yep. that worked for uh, Gary Oldman, yep, yep. you know, he used to send them out to rav- sat, you know, scavenge and shit. And they rolled up on him. As soon as they rolled up, they shot the man in the head. They shot him right in the head. Then they took the woman and they gang raped her, man. Yep. They gang raped her. And then they took their shit, and then afterwards they shot her. After they after they did what they wanted, whatever they got their shit off, you know they passed her around, and then they shot her, and then they took their shit. That's what's coming. Okay, so you punk ass men, you dudes out here, you got a nice car, you got the, and you driving around, and you got the fine woman sitting next to you. Your punk asses are gonna lose out, man. And you Edomites, man. But you know, uh, I'm gonna read this scripture right here. Uh, Zechariah eight. And 16, right? Because the elder Tahir had made a statement earlier. You're supposed to be pushing out the truth. You ain't supposed to be out here trying to wake up these black conscience guys, man. Or nobody for that matter. That If a guy can't see it, then like Yagwab said, just forget him. We moving on. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Abba used to say the same thing. We moving on. And Yagwab used to say this, which Yagwab was a protege to uh, Abba. That, that that was the attitude, man, of, of them old time elders, man. They were like, "Look, hey, Yaquab when a nigga used to come into school and shit, and <laughs> couldn't get it." And I remember this because I came into school and I had the pleasure to come up under those men as well. High priest Yaquab and them, uh, high priest Yaquab is to sit right there. And if a nigga was in the class, I couldn't get it. Yaquab said, "Look, man, it's time for you to leave, man. Somebody get this nigga out of here." We gonna have to check your lineage, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yaquab would question. Yaquab would question whether you was an Israelite, man. He might be a Hamite. He, I don't know. This guy might be an Edomite, man. We got to check his lineage. Get this nigga out of here, because they, 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 he had a short fuse uh, for that shit, man. It was up in age. You didn't have to do yeah, because when you get old, especially when you get a little older, yeah. you know, when you young, man, when you first come in the truth. Like I'm speaking for myself, and I'm pretty sure it was Elder Gabar. When we first came in, in, in the truth, when we were younger men and shit, we were trying to teach everybody, man. Yeah. Get on the train and shit. You come from the school, you all fired up. Then you get on the subway, making your way back home, and you see some simple-minded niggas on the train. You sit there trying to argue, arguing, and look, brother, and the dudes will be arguing with you, yeah. and you still be, and you get into a damn almost fist fight, trying to con- convince these guys that, of the truth. You know, that's when you was young. Or you try, you try to teach a woman. You know what I'm saying? You try to teach a woman. But you know, when you get older, I'm talking about in age and in the truth, you, you man, you ain't got time for that, man. That's why, I mean, we get on Nate because the Spirit got us getting on Nate. Yeah. But, uh, uh, and Yohanna, so on and so forth. But mainly we're about just pushing out the prophecies, man. So that uh, the elect, so that the brothers out there of the elect can get it. Okay. This is uh, Zechariah 8 and 16. These are the things that ye shall... Uh, I'm going to read it again. Let me see. I don't want to lose this. Uh, uh, Jeremiah 49. I'll, I'll come back to that. Zechariah 8 and 16. These are the things that ye shall do. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. Now the word neighbor means brother. Right? That don't mean 
the nigga that lives next door to you that sells drugs. Okay? Or the faggot, the homosexual that lives next door to you. And that's another thing. Them guys, them, them assholes that was down with you, the Fopi and AOC and you niggas, they were on that video, they were like, yeah, uh, uh, you supposed to love homosexuals? You supposed to teach the, that they're going to die if they don't repent. Why are you guys talking about fag a faggot can't repent? If you a faggot, you can't repent. They ain't coming back, man. In the kingdom, they coming back. All right. All if, a, if a faggot repents, they they can If if yeah, technically, if, and because you know why, you know if you got guys that that was in that world, man, yeah, and yeah. they repent, they can come in because Paul yeah, killed come, people. Come, right. But but you know what, man? If you was a faggot all your life and you said you want to be an Israelite, brother, I'm, I am gonna be look. Don't get mad if I look at your ass sideways, man. <laughs> for for a long time, you know. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Cut, yeah. Cut. So that's a hard thing, man. If you a flaming faggot, and you want to be a, like this guy, Dot Dotson, Dotson, oh, Anton, Anton. Now, now it remains to be seen whether he truly p repent. Now, if he truly repented, yeah, the, 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 then, he, right. then he could be then he could be delivered. He man. could be delivered if you he know? truly repents. That's right. That's right. You right because the, the scriptures do say all sins. Yeah, but the sin of uh, blasphemy and the, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Yep, yep. That's the, so you know what? I stand corrected. I'm that's wrong. why we say that Ariar can be forgiven and repent. Yep. Uh, we say Nate can be forgiven and repent. Yep. Even Yohan, well, Yohanna, we don't say it, but <laughs> Yohanna can be, can be forgiven. You know, even even that nigga Yeshaya, <laughs> if he truly <laughs> repent. You got to take them you know, but, he, but they are going to be the least in the kingdom. Yeah, 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 you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I can say this real quick, too. But now it's, it's more than not likely for a faggot, though. Yeah. Because like when you read in Romans, the first chapter, it tells you that the Lord put the, that's a curse from the Most High. Like when, when a guy is in that state, that's a judgment of the Most High upon him. He let them spirits get, get him, man. Yeah. Most times faggots, they was wicked to begin with. So that's why the Most High allowed them to be faggots and lesbians, man. Well, we can, oh, oh, oh. Well, well, you can get there. Romans, the first chapter. And then, uh, well, Paul said it. He said, because they did not like to retain the Most High in their knowledge, the Most High gave them over to a reprobate mind. And then when you read on, it goes into the, the men with men doing that which is unseemly. And then, but then it, then it goes on, and it says they're receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat, which is death. That's why a lot of faggots get AIDS, man. And that's why ultimately they're going to be destroyed by the missiles. But hey, that's true. Like I said, I stand corrected. Technically, according yeah, to the scriptures... Because when Paul was cursing them out in Romans, the first chapter... He was getting at them because a lot of them were faggots. Yeah. But he was saying, you got to repent. Yeah. But if you don't repent, this is going to happen to your ass. Yep, the most I Just like if you go to uh, 1 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, about the um, uh, fornication. Yeah. Um, with one that slept with his father's wife. Yeah. And basically, he was saying, you better stop doing that That's right. or you're going to be destroyed. You're going to be destroyed. And the ones that kept doing it, they got destroyed. Yeah. Just like in Romans 1, the ones that kept doing that shit, yeah. they got destroyed. Con, you know? con, con. Hey, man. And ultimately, that's going to destroy this country because now you pass laws saying it's all right to be a faggot, that you can't speak. You, basically, you're saying that being a faggot is a righteous act. Yeah. And you legislated it with your laws. Or you made it part of your legislation that you protect faggots. Yeah. So that's the thing that's going to get this place destroyed. <laughs> Allowing you to be a faggot and tell, instead of telling somebody, the cops are supposed to be able to be, arrest your ass for being a fucking faggot, man. Yeah. Or put, well, in this society, arrest you, bring the judgment, and then kill your ass, man. But here you got laws where you protect fucking faggots. Yeah. You know? Yeah, man. Just to back up. What Elder Tall said, this is the book of... Now, it, I'm not surprised it's the Church of Corinth. Some of them were faggots. Yeah, they were in the, fa they were in the fa faggotism, the, ro well, the Roman, the book of Romans. They were living among them Romans, man. Yeah. yeah. They were in Rome, which was the capital of... Uh, that was that great um, uh, metropolis. Yeah. So they were all into... Uh, uh, they were all into... Um, what do you call that when women and men get together? Orgies and... Homosexual, bestiality, wife swapping, they wife swapping, wife. yep, and all that nonsense. That's why Paul cursed him out about it. He said, "The ones of you that don't get out of that nonsense, the Most High gonna kill you, man." That's right. Just like the Church of Cor Corinth, women wasn't supposed to uh, uh, be on, uh, teach men, um, and and uh, men wasn't supposed to lay down with an, another man's wife. That's fornication, or lay down with a father's wife. That's fornication. That's the way of them pagan Greeks and them Romans. So Paul was saying, if you don't get out of that shit, 
the Mossad won't destroy you. And a lot of them did get destroyed, man. You know? Yeah, that's the that's the church that Paul had the most trouble with. Now, this is recorded in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 11. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of the Heavenly Father? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, no, right, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. That's Faggots. clearly homosexuals, right? Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards. Those guys that get drunk 9 o'clock in the morning, they're already blind, stinking drunk. And also uh, uh, drunk physically and spiritually. Well, if they get drunk at night, there ain't no reasonable yep. time to get drunk. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Now, if you now if you get nice at your own house, you yeah, know, then you go you're all right, man. Yeah, but you go out there in chambering, the chambering, yeah. and, and riotous living. Yeah, Lord ain't Lord ain't <laughs> dealing with that, man. <laughs> that going that going to the club shit yeah. is totally no, that's out. That's, that's out. out, man. Yeah, no. that's why you wind up getting into fucking fights. Hey, well, it's right here. Fist fights at that. You you had niggas. Hey, you had niggas in Corinth, Greece, getting all dolled up going to the clubs, man. You know, dressing uh, up like women. Yeah, yeah, club Aristotle and shit. You know, <laughs> no, no drunkards, right? No revilers. Those, those are the blasphemers, by the way. People that talk shit about the the Is men that of the Lord. Or re that's revilers. Re revilers? revilers. It says revilers, like oh, revilers. Click, 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 click. Yeah, click on that. Okay, it says revile. So, reveler. Uh, well, it says revile. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A reveler. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I was thinking of something oh, else. Oh, that's okay. That's all they have here. Um, but you brothers can do your homework. You can look the word up. No revilers. No extortioners. Now we yeah, know revilers are the guys that's talking shit against us. Exactly. Exactly. No. No. No ext. You know what made me remember that when uh, somebody said to Paul, "Revilers thou the the the." The priest of the Most High, and then Paul said, "I didn't know he was a, a priest of the Most High," so that's where I remembered that word from. No revilers, no extortioners, and we know what that is. You have plenty of examples of that. Extortionists. Nate, Nate, Nate is. Well, look the word up. Click yep. on it. I'm gonna click on the word. Nate, Nate is like an extortioner. Okay. Johanna, General Johanna, is an extortioner. Yeshaya is a supreme extortioner. <laughs> yep. Um, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was throwing that shot at us because we get on his ass from time to time anyway. Well, then wait a minute. Then Yahweh Shai was going off for getting on them scribes and them Pharisees, man. You know? Yeah, man. If I may say this real quick, and that's just a, a stupid... Yeah, but that's some bullshit, man. Then why, hold up, wait a minute. Why would we go out and speak? We're speaking to Israel. Why would we get on them? Isaiah, 50, Isaiah 58 is no more than 58 and 1. Cry aloud, spare not. See, that's, that's just a, a little trick to get you stupid as, as the elder Gabal call you meat puppets to, to follow him. Says now we, we ain't gonna be saying this. Hey, you shy as a yeah. nobody any damn way. You yeah. shy, you ain't gonna make it. Uh, old and magician. I'm, I'm, yeah, you ain't nothing but Merlin coming back. That, that's who that is. That's who you are, Shia. Hey, Shia, let's go back and play that goddamn. Go back into obscurity and play that goddamn guitar, man. Just do that, man. Keep drinking your, your Alize. Yeah, you ain't gonna make it, you shy. You came back with that same spirit. Yeah, Who's man. Who's the governor of Cam? Uh, <laughs> Who's the governor of campaign doing it? And then we got the answer. All right, I believe it was Vespasian, if I'm not mistaken. And then uh, I put that in. Put that. Go to Google and put who who's the governor campaigning and doing her miraculous. I, 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 I believe it's Vespasian. I can't believe he even. I, I can't believe he even said that, man. You can believe. It. Yeah, right. I, I, I can't believe this nigga's even back, man. Next thing you know, Kazako come out of his sarcophagus, man. Like all them old time niggas. They're trying to, like in other words, see we bring back, look, I guess they're trying to reunite uh, the seven. They're trying to pull that old one, they're trying to actually resurrect one west. Yeah, we got shot. Maybe we can get, hey, well, if you can get R.E.R. and uh, Shaw, see, but they're not going to leave Comfy because they're getting that salary, man. You know, whatever kind of little salary that Comfy is probably giving them, 
You know, but if Johanna can supplement that salary, maybe he'll get Ariane Shaw too, man. <laughs> you'll have uh, you'll have the what's left of the seven back, man. But then I got another question too. I thought Yohanna was the top commanding general over all Israel on earth. So now that Yeshua is over Yohanna, so is Yohanna going to bow out and let acknowledge Shia? Say so I got Shia got to be the top guy then. That's my question. So General Yohanna, are you no longer the top man on earth? Now that Shia is back, you got to remember you Shia is one of the seven. So you got to you, you got to take that seat under Shia, man. Yeah, yeah according to source Wikipedia, his name was Lolianus Mavo, Mavotius. All right, a pagan. He was governor of Campania. All right, if um, it's but Campania. Was that during the time of the Heraculum? No, well, the, the Heraculum, because I had Googled it this morning, the Heraculum was 79 A.D., around that. That was Vespasian. Yeah, <laughs> around that time period. Vespasian was the governor of Campania. And it's funny because and that... And we knew that. That was already, uh, you know... Yeah. It's funny because that, that, that city or that parish in Italy, Campania was in Italy, it was buried by a volcanic ash. Well, so it's Shai's fitting... getting ready to get... Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's fire. fitting that he always yeah. asked that question because that's what's about to bury him, volcanic ash. Because <laughs> hey, that town was destroyed, man. It was a... Uh, Campania was destroyed by volca uh, volcanic ash around 79 A.D. Uh, during uh, Mount Vesuvius. Maybe All right? Maybe, maybe, maybe you, was, you was there, you Shia, in the reincarnation. That's why you're so obsessed all these years with that. Maybe you was there when that volcano came down, man. You know what I'm saying? With your wicked ass, man. You got a lot of wickedness to answer for anyway, you Shia, man. The stuff that you... All that... Stuff with the split with Mo, all that wickedness that you did when you sold out back then, and and, and, and causing the split between Mo and Aria, which Nate and Yasha and Rahab and them guys are responsible too. But you responsible too. You you ain't off the hook, man. You responsible too. All that shit and wickedness you talked about, Masha, which the scripture says every idle word that men shall speak, they should give account thereof. And so you can, you still got an answer for that. Curse not the king, because uh, Masha, man, is a man. What well, we, I ain't gonna say was. Masha is a man of the Lord, man. He's not here on the earth right now. He's in the he's in the spirit world, but he's a man of the Lord, man. You talk when then eventually you talked against Ariya, man, and then uh, and, and then you talked against uh, uh, other men of the Lord. Yeah, I got a scripture to back you up there, bro. This is the book of now. This is concerning Yeshaya with his governor of Campania. Her, during the Herculaneum question, which really has nothing to do with salvation, for, for all this, really all the scriptures, and furthermore, the Herculaneum it was called Herculaneum because those people then back then were worshiping Hercules right. as a god. So it was that period was called the Herculaneum period because you had a bunch of simple-minded Israelites. Yeshua was probably one of them that worshipped Hercules as a god. All right. Movies out now. I wonder if he went to go see the movie. He probably did with them. Did he not come to a Passover one time with them little wings, looking like uh, the FTD man? Look, <laughs> them wings on his boots. He came, yeah, Pegasus boots. <laughs> Which that was supposed to be who? Uh, Mercury, M Mercury, Mercury, right? Mercury. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, pagan god. He came to the Passover dressed up as a pagan god. We're talking about uh, Yeshaya. All right. Anyway, this is the book of uh, uh, Hebrews 6, 8 to 9. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected, like Yeshia. His, he, uh, where's his fruit? Nigga ain't got nothing but thorns and briars, man. And thistles. And thistles. Uh, he, he ain't got nothing that you can eat. Fruit you can eat. All right? <laughs> yeah, yeah how Shia, when he came to that fig tree. All he he's doing is getting them rejects. That's Brian Reed from our, our camp and other camps and guys that fell off and now they yeah. justify it as a coming in. Look, man, once you once you when you take your hand to the plow, get that. That's going into another spirit now. Okay? Yeah. Oh, and look if back, yep. you're not fit for the kingdom. You're not fit for the kingdom. That's right, brother. That's right. May I finish the scripture? Yeah. All right. May I finish this? Okay. 
but that which breath thorns and briars is rejected. That's Ishaya, right? He's been rejected. That's why after 20 years he makes an appearance. 20 years of ob obscurity. And he's Daniela. <laughs> yeah, Daniela he's another one made rejected. a statement. Look, I've been, I've been in this thing for two decades. Right. Yeah, but you took 17 years off. That's right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's right. And all of a sudden you came back from the dead? That's right. Is so rejected. you ain't going to make it either, man. That's right. Rejected. And is nigh unto cursing. Whose end is well, to they are getting cursed right now. They're getting cursed right now. <laughs> whose end is to be burned. Whose end is to be burned by the missiles, man. But beloved, now here's the point. But beloved, we are persuaded better things of you. The beloved is the elect. We are persuaded better things of you. Better than the shit that Yeshua is bringing. The shit that uh, what's his, uh, Priest Daniel is talking. We are persuaded better things of you. And things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. So when you ain't going to hear us talking about who's the governor of camp, what does that got to do with salvation? The scriptures say that we're supposed to speak Bad things accompany, accompanying salvation. All right? That's where it's at. And the reason why Yeshua does that too is to make himself feel like a big man. Who's the governor campaigning to the Herculaneum? And none of them niggas could break it, could give them the answer because them, them are, them are the meat puppets. They're meat puppets, base, base men. Yeah, them niggas were all around Yeshia. They were all clapping like seals, or, or, or you know, all flanked around him like he's some fucking Hollywood, uh, Hollywood megastar. And the nigga had them dark, super dark shades on. You couldn't see his eyes. All right, he had them red mittens on. You know, Santa's helpers of gloves. Yeah, them, <laughs> them, them gloves on, right? Santa's helpers gloves. Talking shit, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, like he, yeah, like he was a superstar. Johanna let him in, like, like you know, like Michael Jackson came back to life and was coming into the damn the fucking uh, auditorium somewhere, man. And all them guys were cheering and going crazy, man. You know, but I'm gonna read. I'm gonna, hey, man, I'm gonna, this is on the point too, because this is what we're doing right now. Zechariah 8 and 16. These are the things that ye shall do. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. That's, that's us. We're the only ones doing that, man. We're the only ones doing that. No matter how, no matter how hard or rough the truth is. That, that's what we're doing. Uh, execute. And now check this out. Execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gates. That's what we're doing. We're executing judgment. That's why we're getting on people, man. Yeah. You're talking about, look, don't be getting on brothers. Why y'all getting on Nate? Because the scripture said, this is what, uh, on the top, it said, this is what ye shall do. All right? So that's what we're doing, man. That's why we get on Nate. That's why we get on Yohanna. That's why we're talking about Yeshia. That's why we get on them uh, black conscience niggas. I can't even, black conscious niggas. That's why we get on them, man. That's why we always getting on somebody, man. There's a GMS. Y'all always getting on somebody. Y'all always talking about people. You niggas ain't got nothing better to do. And if, we, if they do right, You're right. We don't have nothing better to yeah. do. Yeah. You know? We don't have nothing better to do than to get on them. Okay? You asking us if we had anything better, better to do? No, we don't got, have anything better to do. Better Our job, that's why we was placed upon this earth. To curse you niggas out, man. <laughs> hey, well, all the time, I just read it. I'm gonna read, I can read it again to back up what you said. And let none, uh, 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 I'm sorry, speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor, execute execute the judgment. So that means we got the right to judge. Oh, Y'all ain't got the right to be, uh, I just read it, man. Of truth and peace in your gates. And that's what we do. We go down to the camp, we sit there and do videos, we put it on you. That's what we're doing, man. That's what we was put on the earth to do. Right? And then when you read 17, and let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against his neighbor, right? And love no false oath. For all these are things that I hate, saith the Lord, Yahweh, Shem, Yahweh, Shah. You see that? So that's, that's stone cold, man. Uh, now, now, now uh, 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 false oath, that's what Nate is doing. That's what Johanna's doing. They're lying, man. Yeah, like that nigga Nate said, there was a school in Connecticut. 
He ain't saying that's when we knew that they sold out and all that. Okay, let me say this, man. If we sold out, why would we get on the black conscience community? Huh? <laughs> why would we get on them? If anything, we would join them and try to push that black conscience community bullshit, man. Yeah. We're getting on every goddamn body, yeah. man. Anyway, I want you to get me this scripture. This is Acts 15 and 36. And this is talking about Paul, right? Situation with Paul. To show you that Paul didn't tolerate that bullshit where you did the work and then you like, took a break and you know, took a little break over here and you did that. You know, he, Paul, Paul would damn near want to kick your head off, man. I read that and break it down. All right, this is the book of, book of Acts, chapter 15, verse 36. And some days after, Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. Now, we don't have to get on no plane and go out and check them brothers out because the way we go visit them is through the, is through the internet. I'm going to say it like that, through the internet, the, the, the internet, uh, uh, through the YouTube and all that. And then the comment board, like I said, the reason why YouTube was set up is really for us. You got Alex Jones and Michael Rivero and RT News and RT America and all that and all in uh, AMT Adabu 7 and uh, AMTV and Joe Celante and uh, uh, Walter, Walter G. Topley and um, Pepe Escobar. And you got all these other Israelite groups and all that. The real reason why YouTube was set up, the most I put the spirit on these demons and set up YouTube for us. You know, all that mess is surrounding the truth. And the truth is right here. All right? It says, and Barnabas, verse 37, and Barnabas determined to take with him, with them, John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia, and went not with them to the work. So basically, you know, Barnabas wanted to bring Mark with him, you know, to go teach. But Paul was like, nah, man, this guy, he left the work and went to Pamphylia. You know, and he didn't, he say, and went not with them to the work. So Paul was like, nah, man, why are you going to bring this guy? When this guy was with us, he left when we were in the middle of doing the work. So it says, um, and the contention was so sharp between them. So basically what this caused, it caused a big, a big uh, quarrel, a big fight between Barnabas and, and, uh, and Paul. So it, it, was, it, was, it was a heated debate going back, you know, back and forth. It says, and the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. So it was so heavy and so intense that, that from that point on they split up. They never got back together. You know, so, so that just shows you the, the seriousness of how Paul took, took the work. You know, you have to do the work. If you stop doing the work, then, then, then you know, you, you, you know, no good for the work. You know, the only way that you can uh, um, um, come back is if you may be uh, uh, the prodigal son. And that's, you know, that is up to Yahweh Bashem and Yahweh Shai. But if once you're doing the work and you just stop doing the work and you don't have no good excuse, the Lord really can't use you anymore. Yeah, Paul was just mad at it, and Paul was in the right. Because this guy, he, well, I got to go do this. And I'm pretty sure Paul, like, looked at him like, fucking nigga, yeah, you know? Yeah. And then Barnabas, nah, let's bring him and shit, you know? Yeah. Anyway, go from there to uh, 2 Timothy 4, and start from the first, and we're going to read down. 4 and 1. This is the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 1. I charge thee therefore before the Most High, and the Lord Yahushai, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. So you, you heard that, uh, Baloo? You know, when it's nice outside and when it's brick cold. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. So what are you reproving and rebuking? Anything that's going off, anything that's going contrary to the scriptures. Look up the word reprove and then rebuke. We went through this before. You know, so anything that's going against the scriptures, that's what we're supposed to speak against. 
including including you guys out here that 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 uh, call yourself Israelites, especially those of you that are that are that are in a leadership position to lead and guide men to have men looking up to you. You're supposed to be walking that straight and narrow path when it comes to the work, you know. So if you're not doing that, if you're teaching something contrary to the scriptures, then we're going to curse your ass out. And that's the bottom line. That's what Yahweh Shai did. That's what Paul did. That's what the men of the Lord did. So why, why, why is it so different for us? We're supposed to do the same things. Yeah, the word reprove, uh, the, the Greek is, uh, let me play the Greek. 1851, Eleg Ho. It says uh, to convict, refute, confute, generally with a suggestion of shame of the person convicted, by conviction to bring to light, or to the light, to expose, to find fault with, correct. Uh, that means if somebody's teaching that the mark of the beast is Christianity, and an embargo, we're supposed to come back and say, no, he's going r off. This is what it means. It means the, it means the uh, microchip. That's right. So that's your job, Bun Yum Yum. Gangster Nate, uh, Gate and Gangster Ben. Barack, Ash. That's your job, man. Yeah. If you see that Nate is going off, now you might say, well, wait a minute, you guys are going off with that. Uh, the Sabbath, lunar, lunar Sabbath. Well, sh show us where we went off at, man. You can make a stop teaching us by doing one thing. Give me the word Friday or Saturday out the Bible. <laughs> or yeah. give me a scripture where the Israelites had two separate calendars. That's right. They had Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, right. <laughs> I can speak English. That's from, that's from a, a, a scene from uh, Godfather, Godfather with Godfather 2, right? Yeah. It was part one. You sure? It was part one. Okay, it was part one. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, okay, okay. You're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah, you, you're right, one, brother. Yeah. I stand corrected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, ain't, I ain't ashamed to uh you know correct you know if I'm correct I'm corrected, man. You know? But 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 um but anyway, show me in the scripture, give me the word Friday out the scriptures, give me the word Saturday out the scriptures, give me the word Sunday, give me the word Monday, give me the word Tuesday, give me a scripture. Where it says that the, the children of Israel, that they, when they had their high holy days, they did things based upon the new moon. But then they had another calendar where they took care of business. Huh? You can't do it because it ain't in there, man. That's right. Go ahead, Ock. Yeah, reading on, it says, generally with a suggestion of shame of the person convicted. And uh, once you've well, been... I'm sorry, we're putting them to shame, man. Exactly. And like when we get on bubble eyes about teaching that Esau can make it. He don't know the scriptures. When guys go around saying that Cornelius is an Edomite, you don't know. You have, you're not deep, man. There's nothing deep about you. The spirit ain't working with you, man. That's right. And that's why Dunyala, a priest Dunyala, as he likes to call himself, we were getting on him about that thing so bad that he don't even say, well, no, uh, uh, Cornelius is an Edomite. He just, he just ignores it, man. Yeah, he's lost. He just ignores it, all right? They like that song with Lisa, Lisa lost in emotion. That's him, man. <laughs> lost in emotion. <laughs> hey, that's him, man. Uh, generally with a suggestion of shame. And, they, and you, you're supposed to be ashamed. All right? It tells you that in 1 Corinthians 15 and, uh, and uh, the 15th chapter, 34th verse. Yeah, because, because when you're ashamed, that, what does that do? That causes you to repent. That humbles you. Turn you. around and it humbles you, right. Right. Uh, with a suggestion of shame of the person convicted. All right, you get the idea. Let me go to the next word. Uh, I, I, I got a quick precept to back okay. you up on, on that word. Yeah, absolutely. This is our First Corinthians seven. I mean, Second Corinthians seven and six. Nevertheless, the Most High that comforted those that are cast down, comforted us by the, the coming of Titus, and not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you. When he told us your earnest desire, your mourning, your fervent mind toward me, so that I rejoiced the more. For though I, for though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent, though I did repent. For I perceived that the same epistle hath made you sorry, though it were but for a season. Now I rejoice not that you were made sorry, 
but that you sorrow to repentance. For you were made sorry after a godly manner that you might receive damage by us in nothing. Why? Because he told you you were going off. You were ashamed because you were going off. You got corrected and then you walked in the right path and it wasn't laid to Paul's charge. Why? Because he corrected you. He reproved you. He rebuked you. And that's what the word repent means. That's it. Re means back and pent means to feel sorrow. Fine. That's where you get the word penitentiary from. Another thing too with you guys, you don't know the meaning of your words. That's, that's where a whole lot of uh, your ignorance comes from. From not knowing the meaning of words. Uh, the next word is rebuke. Which you could learn that, that technique if the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahshua was dealing with you. You know? Uh, rebuke. The Greek word there is... Strong's G, 2008. Epitimao. Epitimao. It says to show honor to honor. Uh, to raise to raise the price of, to adjust, I'm sorry, to add, add, to add, judge, to add judge, uh, to, to, to bring with fault, or to tax with fault. To tax with fault. Right, to, to, to rebuke. Rebuke. All right, reprove, correct. Censure severely, to admonish or charge sharply. Now the word admonish means to warn. Right. And the reason why a lot of you guys out there, you don't get on each other, is because you know you're off. You know, you know you're not teaching the right thing. You know that your oh. doctrine is flawed. Oh, and it says, I'm sorry, it says to show honor. Mm -hmm. So when you're rebuking, you're really showing honor to that person. It's right there, to show honor to, to honor. But they don't see it that way, right. because they're lost in emotion. <laughs> Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor, yep. so thou shalt not suffer sin upon him. That's right. That's right? right. So that's really showing, really is showing honor. Y'all talking about we ain't got no love. We got true love. That's so right. y'all niggas just don't understand it. True love is to curse you the fuck out through the spirit, according to the word of the Most High. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Right. You know that's yeah. showing you real honor. Cause, it, cause see, the thing is, man, you you living off all that old shit. That don't mean nothing if if you if you fall off. All right, and I got the scripture right here in Ezekiel. Once you, 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 once you fall back into the world, I don't care if you did open up 20 schools, 30 camps. You went back into the world, nigga. All right? This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse, that's right, verse 24. But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity, and what's committing iniquity? Iniquity is sin upon sin. When you go, when you stop doing this work, when you, uh, Take your hand from the plow, because that was a commandment, man. The Lord commanded us to go out there and, and, and teach this word. So once you stop and take a break, you broke that commandment that Yahweh Shai, the Lord gave us to do. All right? So now you're committing iniquity. So it says, when a man committeth iniquity and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? All his righteousness that he have done shall not be mentioned. So you shouldn't even be talking about the, the Shia, the fifth elder, the fifth elder. Or the fifth, whatever, you know? You shouldn't be talking about him, man. The scripture said everything that he did should not be mentioned, man. Yeah, if anything, all of you guys there should have laid into his ass and asked right. him where the hell was he at. But then again, a lot of you guys fell out. A lot of you guys haven't been around. A lot of you guys' are, are doctrine is flawed. That's why that one dude, was that Imam Bashir that was there? Yeah. He, 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 he you know, he, he's, from the, he's a bugged out dude. He's into that black unconscious nonsense, Islam and all that. And, and he, he cut you guys, man. You know, he talking about, look, all of you guys getting together. Because the, it is true, the black unconscious community, all them guys that are together in, in there, they all have different doctrines. And they agree with that. And they'll tell you, yeah, you're right. But you guys, you all come, you all come together and you all have different doctrines. You know, some of you uh, are, are teach the name of the Lord. Some of you don't. Some of you uh, um, um, teach, uh, you have different, some of you say that uh, Cornelius is an Israelite. Some of you say Cornelius is an Edomite. You know, so you all have different doctrines, and he cut you. Yeah. But you have one common thing that you do is you come together. When you come together, is you come against us, you know, because the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai is not working with you guys, man. Yeah. And that's why you allowed this guy, uh, Yeshaya, to come up in there and act like he was the Most High himself in the midst of all you guys. You were looking at him in awe like he was some great man. He used to be a great man at one time, but he fell off. 
You know? So the Most High is not dealing with him. That's why the best, the best thing he could do, he, all these years he's been gone, the best question he can give you, he didn't say, well, what's the name of the Lord? What's the name of the Most High? Or what do you do to receive salvation? You know? Or what's the mark of the beast? Or what's this? Or what's that? In the scriptures, the best question he can come up is, who is the governor of Campania? You know? What kind of madness is that, man? And I remember, I remember sitting in Yeshia's classes, and I'm be honest, I, I, would, I would be confused. You know, at the end of the class, some, some classes, three, them three-hour classes, you know, seven to ten at night, Friday nights, I used to go, come down from Bridgeport, get off in Harlem, go right there to the class, and I, and I'll look at my page at the end of the night, I have five scriptures on my, on my, on my, on, on my, uh, on my paper, on my notes, and then the, the title of the, of the uh, lesson was The Curly in Effect. Hey, but brother, but you know you hey, you got a good laughing though, right? No, you yeah, that that did, I did. I got I, man, I I got a good laugh. But you know what? After a while, I was like, man, I'm not learning anything. I don't want to come here just for a laugh. I want to I want to learn. You know, and that's <laughs> when I got I was get I was I was getting upset because I wasn't learning. It says the house of the wise is in the morning. That's God, right. God. God. Yep. God. Hey, 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 let me read this real quick, then I'm gonna pass it on to Elder Gabal. Second Ezra is nine and seven, right? And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works mm. and by faith whereby ye have believed. That's it. You see that? So you're going to be delivered according to your works, man. Right. This whole thing, you're making it out of here according to what you do here on the earth. So if you're in the work and you stay in the work and you stay in the work to the end, then you're going to make it so that you guys that fall off and we can back it up with the scriptures. We've been quoting it. It said, "He that take the elder Taha quoted it. He that taketh hold in the plow and looketh back is not fit for the kingdom. That's works. So if you was in this truth and you was teaching and you you was in the work, then you left for a certain amount of years and came back. According to the scriptures, you ain't gonna make it. According to the scriptures, you can't be saved because your works were well, your, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Flawed. Was he sold out? You sure he sold out, man. Yeah, Ishaya, you sold out, man. You sold out way back in the night uh, in the nineties, man. You had those three cars, top of the line uh, automobiles, and you were supposed to be a teacher back then. How the hell did you get that? Uh, you had one car that had high, and you're a vain fellow. Hey, that's why the Lord broke that whole thing up, man. And He used yeah. demons to do it. And Nate was one of them, which he never liked to speak of, speak yeah. about, you know. You're a vain fellow, He called too. himself uh, you know, Marshall, was one of the leaders, the two top leaders with Marshall and Yaquab, but didn't nothing mention nothing about Ariah. And Ariah was the main one that broke down them scriptures, man. Yeah. Well, yeah. we took the, uh, the, the torch from Ariah, and we are the new Ariahs because we're going in the scriptures that Ariah didn't go into, man. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Now, it says here, and we're going to go back to where we're jumping around, but we're getting into a lot of things, right? Now, when you shy when he spoke about the mother, the, the, the mother of the earth or the center of the earth, did, what, did he say what it, what it was? Mesopotamia. Which, which is, uh, which that's Ur, is that Ur, the, Ur, the, that's Ur, the child, Chad D's. Uh, matter of fact, go, Google that. Go, Google Mesopotamia. Because I got Genesis, the 12th chapter, on the ready. On the ready. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, because it said, it said here, it said in uh, Genesis 11 and 31, it said in Terah. Now, this was uh, Abraham's father. Took Abram, his son, and Lot, the son of Haran, which uh, that's, uh, that's uh, Abraham's nephew, all right, which he was a Hebrew too. His son's sons, and uh, Sa Sarai, his daughter. Now, that Sarai's daughter was... Uh, he, she was the daughter of Terah, right? It says, Terah took Abraham, his son, and Lot, the son of Har Haran, his son's son, and Sarah, his daughter-in-law, I'm sorry, his daughter-in-law, uh, his, his son, Abraham's wife. And they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees,